Ah, boo! Sorry, we couldn't help it. But if you love a good scare, join the club. Spooky tales of the supernatural or things that defy scientific or rational explanation are definite crowd pleasers. But isn't it odd how so many of us crave creepy stories like this? Being afraid or anxious, even if it's just a story, isn't exactly pleasant. So why do we keep doing it to ourselves? Not to mention, we pay big money for it. In 2017, the supernatural horror movie It grossed over 700 million US dollars at box offices worldwide. Fear pays, doesn't it, Georgie? And the late Victorians were also keen for a fright. Mind you, they were still flocking to public executions. In the late 1800s, shilling shockers were all the rage. These were cheap paperback novels with dark, lurid tales of terror, violence and gore. So, of course, The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde was a bestseller. There are deep psychological reasons why humans crave horror stories. But before we get to that, let's look at the way Stevenson depicts supernatural elements in his classic work of gothic fiction. The strange case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde is part of the gothic genre or category of literature because the story has certain key elements. These include the supernatural, doppelgangers or shadow selves, madness and psychological distress, hideous violence and death, confinement, an atmosphere of mystery and suspense, and dark and decaying settings, which are places where the action happens. That's right. Stevenson managed to fit all that and more into this novella, or short novel, which made him a gothic master and a household name. The story is told from the perspective of a rational, no-nonsense kind of guy, Gabriel Utterson. He's a middle-aged lawyer, a modest man who was undemonstrative at the best. Stevenson characterises or depicts Utterson as someone who keeps his moods and imagination in check. Since the narrative point of view reflects Utterson's logical mindset, Stevenson invites us to suspend our disbelief and just go along with it. Remember, narrative point of view is the perspective from which the narrator tells us the story. The fact that Utterson is so level-headed makes this bizarre tale so much easier to buy into. However, that also means that the juicy supernatural elements are a bit sparse until the novella's latter chapters. That's when the reveals start rolling in. In the meantime, Stevenson whets our appetite with creepy descriptions of the villainous Mr Hyde. His hideous appearance baffles Utterson's friend, Mr Enfield, who says, He gives a strong feeling of deformity, although I couldn't specify the point. He's an extraordinary-looking man, and yet I can't describe him. The tone or emotion of bewilderment suggests that Mr Hyde's ugliness isn't natural. There's something sinister about him. But what is it? When Utterson starts investigating the troubling connection between Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, he learns that Dr Jekyll has been dabbling in unscientific balderdash. Apparently, Dr Jekyll became too fanciful for his old colleague Dr Lanyon and went wrong, wrong in mind. In this dialogue or conversation between Utterson and Dr Lanyon, Stevenson foreshadows or hints at the supernatural forces Dr. Jekyll is tampering with. He's also alluding to Dr. Jekyll's mania, which is a form of mental illness. Dr. Lanyon was so appalled by Dr. Jekyll's obsession with unscientific ideas that he cut ties. As we mentioned before, madness is a classic trope or recognisable idea that's frequently used in the Gothic texts. It adds to the story's unsettling atmosphere and is designed to make us uncomfortable. After all, if an educated, respectable man like Dr Jekyll can go off the deep end, can't anyone? Another question is, 
Was Dr. Jekyll mentally ill before or after he started messing around with supernatural forces? Maybe all it took was a little push. When Utterson finally meets Mr. Hyde, he's rattled at a spiritual level. In his private ruminations, Utterson exclaims, God bless me, the man seems hardly human. Oh, my poor old Henry Jekyll, if ever I read Satan's signature upon a face, it is on that of your new friend. The juxtaposition of God and Satan here suggests that Utterson's religious faith is activated by his encounter with Hyde. Remember, juxtaposition is when two things are placed side by side to create an interesting contrast. The fact that Utterson mentions both God and Satan reveals a serious case of the heebie-jeebies. Hopefully, you never encounter someone as unnaturally evil as Hyde, but if you do, please write a cracking tale about it. Sadly, Dr Lanyon's encounter with Mr Hyde brings on a fatal bout of supernatural terror. After witnessing Mr Hyde's gruesome transformation into Dr Jekyll, Dr Lanyon gets a shock he doesn't recover from. He had his death warrant written legibly on his face. His flesh had fallen away. A look in the eye and quality of manner that seemed to testify to some deep-seated terror of the mind. The visual imagery here helps us imagine a mental picture of a man who's deteriorating quickly. It's a terrible sight. Poor Dr Lanyon's appearance contrasts or strongly differs to the way he was only recently. A hearty, healthy, dapper, red-faced gentleman with a boisterous and decided manner. It goes to show how dangerous terror can be. One nasty shock and it can be curtains. Isn't that why we don't let our feet hang over the end of the bed at night? So let's enjoy the scene that induces Dr Lanyon's supernatural terror, shall we? It's described in his epistolary account, or letter he addresses to Utterson. An epistolary novel is a story that's told through a collection of letters and other documents. Stevenson uses this technique to make the inexplicable more believable. Lanyon witnesses Mr Hyde drink a mysterious potion. Then he seemed to swell. His face became suddenly black and the features seemed to melt and alter. And the next moment, there stood Henry Jekyll. This posthumous revelation from Dr Lanyon is part of the novella's denouement, or resolution. This is where the mystery of Dr. Jekyll's apparent illness, seclusion and disappearance is finally explained. The visual imagery depicts a scene of supernatural horror. A man undergoes a hideous, impossible transformation into a totally different person. What would you do? Would you run? Cover your eyes and scream like Lanyon? Or hit the record button? Dr. Lanyon's description is complemented in Henry Jekyll's full statement of the case, where Dr. Jekyll describes his first transformation. But this time, Stevenson uses visceral imagery to portray the moment, which is the use of words to help us imagine the internal workings of the body, like muscles and organs. When you ask for a supernatural transformation, this is what you get. Racking pangs, a grinding in the bones, deadly nausea, and a horror of the spirit that cannot be exceeded at the hour of birth or death. Yikes. No thanks. But Dr. Jekyll gets a taste for it. He enjoys the freedom of being Mr. Hyde. Until the transformations start happening without the potion. After an adventurous night on the town as Mr. Hyde... Dr. Jekyll gets a nasty surprise. Yes, I had gone to bed Henry Jekyll. I had awakened Edward Hyde. How was this to be explained? This rhetorical question, which doesn't expect a reply but makes the story more dramatic, portrays Dr. Jekyll's alarm. He's unlocked another level of supernatural transformation. The workings of his potion were mysterious enough, 
But this involuntary body swap is quite a phenomenon. In the end, Dr Jekyll must come to terms with the permanent overthrow of his identity. The murderous Mr Hyde becomes the dominant entity. This reality causes Dr Jekyll to despise Mr Hyde as not only hellish but inorganic and an embodiment of the slime of the pit. This is a biblical allusion or reference to the Bible which highlights the idea of hell. According to Christian theology, that's the bad place in the afterlife where unrepentant sinners can end up. It's also where Satan and his demons are said to hang out and torment the damned. Thus, Stevenson portrays Mr Hyde as more of a demonic force from the pit of hell than an organic life form. He's a projection of all the evil parts of Dr Jekyll's immortal soul. The chilling thing is that Hyde, this child of hell, had always lay caged in Dr Jekyll's flesh. All it needed was an invitation. When supernatural evil becomes enmeshed with lived reality, that's real horror, don't you think? As stimulating and thrilling as supernatural stories are, most of us don't actually want to live them out. We want the adrenaline hit, but we also want to be able to close the book or hit the stop button. Knowing that we're safely detached from the supernatural horror makes it super fun. But what happens when the composer writes a story so vivid and compelling that we question our safety? Did Stevenson achieve that for you? If so, you must have a wonderful imagination. If not, congratulations on having nerves of steel. Just remember to be careful about who or what you invite into your life. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.